Hello and welcome to part two of the uh, RapidRake version two tutorials. In this uh, tutorial, I'll be covering how to create and populate your proxies to fit a character. So this is a fairly typical bipedal humanoid character, and this is what RapidRake Advanced is, is, is designed for. Uh, this is a model based off of design uh, concepts by a good friend of mine, Joel McMillan, and between the two of us, we built this model, and I'm going to be using it to show you how to set up rapid rig. So if you follow along in the first tutorial we created these shelf buttons and I'm going to load up the rapid rig advanced UI and just go through these settings with you. So in the first tab we'll be covering you have these different settings that you can set for your character and then a create proxies button some options for posing and then saving and loading transforms. So basically you start at the top and work your way down. So before you hit the big green button, you want to set these settings here. If you're unsure of what any of this stuff does, simply mouse over it and it will give you an annotation. So a little helpful hint, this is new to version two, just to make things a little bit easier for you if you're unclear on anything. And I'm going to go ahead and set my settings. So for this character, he has four fingers and a thumb. So I'll leave these as is, fairly standard. For the toes, uh, he just has a boot, so he doesn't need any toes. We'll just leave this at one. So we'll just have one main toe. For the spine and neck, you can set this to any number you want between 2 and 10 for the spine, and 1 and 9 for the neck. Uh, the spine kind of needs two joints, that's the reasoning for that, because we kind of have a spine top. And I'm going to leave these just at their default. So once I'm good with this, I'm going to click Create Proxies. This will take a second, but there you go. So you can see it's like way too small for my character. So I'm going to highlight that and just scale it up to fit my character somewhat. Okay, it's not going to fit your character perfectly right off the bat. We'll have to adjust these to make them fit a little better. Now that I have that roughly about the size of my character, that looks about right, I can start going in and moving these manually. Now one thing I've turned off is uh, the ability to select surface objects, or you can set, if you have your geometry on layers, you can set it to reference, that way you don't accidentally start grabbing and moving your character. You can just grab the proxies, simply. So I'm going to use all my different views to get things into the proper location. So first off, I'm going to switch to my front view. And I'm going to start with the root. This is the root of your character where its main pivot will be. Usually it's somewhere around the hips. I'm going to place it about there. And I'm going to take the left hip, put it somewhere around there. And then I'm going to skip the knee for now. I'm going to go to the ankle. Position it there. That looks not bad. For the spine, I'm just going to bring this up a little ways. Somewhere like there. And then the clavicle, depending on the range of motion, you can put this wherever you want. I'm going to bring it in a little bit closer to the center of the character. Now one thing I should mention is these center controls. So the root, uh, the spine top, and the different spine ones, neck and head, you can't move them off the center. Okay, they need to be centered on your character, and hopefully you've built your character in such a way that it is built on the center, on the origin, and facing positive Z. That's how this, uh, most characters are set up, and you'll need to do the same if you want to use Rapid Rig. So I'm going to continue here and place my shoulder somewhere around there, wrist, probably go around there. Elbow, I'll bring back a little bit. And as I'm manipulating these things, you can see I've only done one side. I can go in and try to match the right side to it. You can start with either side you want, but rather than doing that, you can simply hit left to right. In my case, this character is symmetrical, so I will make sure that uh, I'm using these left to right, right to left all the time, just so he's symmetrical and make things easier in the end. Save me a bunch of time. So that looks good for that. I'm going to switch to my front view, or sorry, my side view, and continue editing. So the ankle, I'm going to bring back here. And I'm going to scale this, this down a bit. 
the foot's not that big. And for one, I can bring the hips back a little bit. I can manipulate the different spine joints in place. I got the right one I want. Okay. Get the head into the right place. So the head will probably end up somewhere around here, maybe. Seems about right. I mean, the top of the head is actually kind of around here, but again, it's it's a cartoon character, so I can take some artistic freedom there. Uh, that'll be the jaw here, the jaw end. So the jaw ends, uh, the jaw end, the head tip, jaw tip, and fingertips, and some of the tip joints, those are just there to set the scale, so uh, for your final controls. For the eyes, I'm just going to snap these to the center of the eye, one axis at a time. And now I'm going to switch over to my top view get his arms into the right place there we go grab my clavicle collarbone make sure that's kinda of where I want yeah that looks about right elbow I'm just gonna bring back a little bit so yeah again you want to be very careful with your elbows and knees so this arrow indicates the direction that your elbow will bend. So it's going to bend around this axis, okay, around our Y. So you can see if I bring this up, okay, this is the angle where the arm is straight, and therefore that's the way this hinge joint, elbows and knees are hinge joints, that's where it will bend. So you want to be very careful when moving these up and down because it can really throw off your angle. And I can continue to. Uh, fine tweak these. This should take you a few minutes because you want to make sure it's fairly accurate. Uh, and then on the feet you'll notice that there's these different controls. So we have our toe control, our toe joints. I'm just going to pull these into place. Somewhere like that. And then yeah, these locator looking ones. These aren't actual joints but these are pivot locations for your foot. So you have a heel pivot, so I want to drag that to where the heel will pivot from. And then we have an out pivot, so this is so your character can kind of roll his foot from side to side. And then here's the right side. That looks about right. Bring that in a little bit more. Left to right. Alright, so we discussed these ones, which are these odd looking ones, so that's for pivots. Again, we're familiar now with the knees and ankles, or sorry, knees and elbows on how to pivot those. And then on the hands, there's these ones with uh, these little up arrows on those. So those indicate the up axis for, for your joints. So this is pretty important, if, especially if you have a thumb like this that's at a weird angle. So what I can do is now, you know, switch between my different views, get this into the place I want, rotate it, and you can see I'm, I'm trying to angle it so it matches my character's geometry. So we can see his, his thumb points up at that angle, so I want to make sure that this matches that fairly close. And I can, can keep going in and manipulating these, and you just want to make sure that everything fits the character as best you can. Now, I've already uh, set this up in advance for the fingers, rather than wasting a lot of time showing you this. Uh, I'm just going to go in and load in my proxies. So there we go. And now we can see that that fits the fingers fairly well, head set up eyes are in the right location. Everything looks looks about right. Now, I should mention how these work now, now that we're at this point. 
so you can save and load proxy transforms. Okay, so that's not saving or loading the actual proxies themselves. We're not saving these. We're just saving the uh, transform data, so translate, rotate, scales on these out to a file which we can then load. The reason it's set up like this is now that I'm at this point, I may decide, you know what, I'm not wanting uh, four spine joints. I want I want five. Okay, so I can now set this to five or six. Uh, for the neck, I may want only two. And I may decide, you know what, I want him to have some toes. So I'm going to set this to five because maybe he takes his boots off at some point. And uh, I don't want him to have thumbs anymore. Okay, now you can only create one set of proxies at a time. Okay, so proxies already exist in the scene, no action taken. So what I have to do is I'm going to go over to my rig extras and I'm going to delete the proxies. Okay. Now I've deleted them. I don't have any more. So now I can create new ones. And it's going to create them based on those settings. Now rather than having to, you know, repopulate this to fit my character again, I can simply load in that one I had before. And once I've done that, you can see it now fits. And I have the, the extra joints, the extra proxies for my spine, and now I have toe ones I can now adjust. And you can do this as often as you want. So let's say I had a character where I wanted the arms down like this. Okay, I can go left to right, match that up, and then I can save this out as a file. So I give this a name, I can say this is cowboy. Um, oops, do this again. Cowboy 45 degrees for the arms. and save that. So this just saves a, a text file, basically. And so if I were to reset the proxies, or create new ones, I could then load in that information, and there I go. So if you have multiple characters that are similar, you may have a good starting point where this becomes really useful. But again, I'm just going to delete these proxies, and I'm going to go and create them back to the way they were, so I want my thumbs back on. Maybe I'll leave spine at 6, put my neck at three again, create proxies, and I'm going to load in this cowboy proxies zero one file that I saved from before. There we go. So now I have everything fairly lined up with my character the way I want. It's a good time to save your file, and in the next tutorial, I'll be going over generate rig. Thanks for watching.